Welcome to Regional Arts Australia Artlands Conversation Series. My name is Scott Howie and I am the General Manager of Regional Arts Australia. And I'm joining you today from the lands of the Wiradjuri Nation from Urin Quinty, a small village in regional New South Wales. Regional Arts Australia acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land and water throughout Australia and we pay our respect to Elders past, present and emerging. I'm delighted to welcome you to this session of the Outlands Conversation, where we unbox um, the bump in box. Um, the Outlands Conversation series is a curated program of critical conversations drawing on creative ideas and emerging trends playing out across the nation. And all of the Outlands programming is supported by the Australian Government's Regional Arts Fund. Firstly, a little housekeeping. Today's session will be Auslan interpreted and closed captioning is available. If you wish to enlarge the view of the Auslan interpreters, scroll over the top right hand corner of the video panel and there is a drop down menu where you can select pin video. This will make the presenter screen larger. There are two Auslan interpreters today, Dana and Georgia. They will interpret for about 15 minutes each and then swap over. So you'll need to pin each interpreter to maintain the large screen size. Down the bottom of the screen, you'll see a Q&A button. Please use this to ask any questions uh, later in the session. And I will be uh, hosting a Q&A with um, our presenters uh, towards the end using the Q&A function. Please also pop in to the chat and let us know where you're coming from today, just so we know who's here. So today's topic is the bump in box and we are exceptionally excited to have with us today producer Elizabeth Rogers and playwright Sarah Hope as they unbox the first iteration of the bump in box talking us through its successes difficulties learnings and their learnings of the project this is a new way to provide the industry with a new model for arts touring that has long out term outcomes for teachers to be supported developing creative work Elizabeth or Liz is uh, has long experience working production on musicals, children's shows, dance, contemporary music, cabaret and festivals. And she now produces and coordinates as the performing arts manager at Artback NT, the Northern Territory's only multi-art form touring development agency. Sarah is a playwright and theatre maker who graduated from the University of Queensland in 2008. And she has a variety of the, uh, experience in theatrical projects as a director, writer, producer and performer in both Brisbane and Darwin. Uh, so I'd like to welcome, on behalf of RAA, I'd like to welcome all of you here and hand over now to Liz and Sarah to unbox the bump in box. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so lovely to be here. <laughs> We're very excited. We're um, really excited about this project. And so I'm going to give you a bit of a background about where it all came from and how it all came about. So Dog Dog the Story um, came about 12 years ago now. What is it? 2022, 10 years ago. In um, 2012, I went, so I was living in Darwin and working in youth arts and I ended up working in Gallowinkle in northeast Arnhem Land on Alco Island um, with young people and early years and primary school in the um, school on Elko Island and I was running arts projects there um, and we did a lot of film and theatre projects and it was an amazing experience to work with the commu the Yongle community on Elko Island um, on these bilingual projects uh, but while I was there something really um, sad happened to a young person um, that really touched me and the whole community quite deeply. Um, and I felt a really strong urge to want to write a story for young people that helped adults talk to them about difficult emotions and talk to them about um, how to know when you're safe and who you're safe with. Um, and so I had this urge in my brain for quite a long time and I didn't, you know, I sort of didn't know where it was going to go. But then I'm just going to share the screen now. 
then I was inspired by a little dog. Here's the real dog dog. This little dog who used to go with me, a little camp dog on my walks every morning. So I always walked and ran when I was on the island and dog dog used to come with me. And unlike all the other camp dogs, dog dog was a really like gentle, soft puppy, you know, he was really lovely to everyone and he really just wanted to stick by your side. Um, so I thought, okay, that's, I'm going to use dog dog as a character and I'm going to write a play about him. So I took this story, this idea and the character of Dog Dog to um, Corrugated Iron Youth Arts, who are the um, premier youth arts company in the Northern Territory and said, can we make a play? And they were on board, which was really exciting. And then I was lucky enough to get um, one of the first actually Brown Smart uh, build up um, grants, which is a development program at Brown Smart, the theatre in Darwin, to continue developing this play. And I got to work with a fantastic dramaturg and playwright, Marianne Butler, and a fantastic director, Gail Evans, to bring the whole story to life. Um, and so the first performance of Dog Dog, the first tour, I was lucky enough to go on the tour and we went to urban schools in Darwin and we went to remote schools and we were able to take Dog Dog back to um, Arnhem Land where he came from. We took the play to Galawinku and they, well, I think they seem to love it. Um, so here is, this is just, it's a bit of a blurry image just from my phone of the first cast in their first performance at Brown Smart before we went on the road. Um, and there's a little dog on set in Galawinku. So the place that inspired the story of Dog Dog. And oh, then from there, I'm just gonna share the screen again, sorry. From there, that first tour, Art Back and T said, okay, we'd love to tour this now. And that was really exciting because that meant that the following year, and Liz worked on this, um, the play was able to go to additional remote communities where it had never been before. So one of the really important um, things about this play was that I need, I wanted the play to be relevant for NT children, which meant it needed to be really physical and not necessarily just rely on English because in the NT so many young people are bilingual. Um, so it was a great challenge, um, but it's had great outcomes. And then last year, Liz called me and said, let's make this thing called a bump in box so that it can get to even more young people more accessibly and we'll send it out. And I'll hand it over to Liz to tell you more about that. But before I do, I'm sorry I didn't do this at the start. I do want to acknowledge that I'm coming from, um, I live in what's known now as often as Brisbane um, Mianjin, and it's the traditional owners here are the Turrbal and Jagera people. And um, I feel very grateful to be working and living on their land. So over to Liz to talk more about what happened to the project after those first two tours. Yeah, when I when I jumped on. All right. And thank you. And I'm tuning in from Larrakia land here in Darwin, Garamalang. So um, it was actually two years ago that I got in touch with Sarah at this particular point because it was it was I don't know if any of you remember something that happened two years ago in March. <laughs> That's when everything shut down and locked down for us all. And we were obviously all of us were thinking, wow, how can we keep using the arts how can we keep working in the arts i was exploring the concept of the question well i you know i i work in live performance for a reason it's face to face human connection spirit to spirit kind of stuff and so while digital is useful and we're certainly using it this platform right now it isn't going to hit the mark all the time and so i was trying to think of 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 things that could um, bridge that gap in isolation I was trying to think of things that where um, we didn't have to rely on the internet as well 
uh, I'll just say where I was locked down on initially in March 2020 was in a block in Humpty Doo. Um, and the office I was using was a caravan that had been adapted into a mobile recording studio. So I was working from a caravan and Humpty Doo is only 40 kilometres outside of Darwin, but it's still, if there's a storm, you have no internet. So, <laughs> so really being aware of um, the fact that actually the internet's not reliable everywhere, that live performance is about um, physical, tangible things that you can hold. I was trying to think of what can we do with children as well. You know, even at that time, I knew that children and especially children in the communities would not be able to stay away from each other. Like you, you actually can't. <laughs> we, we've seen it, we've experienced it, the difficulty of isolation. Um, I wanted to, I was thinking of ways to keep artists employed safely and, you know, to keep using the original artists that we've been working with and something that would be efficient. You know, we wouldn't have to go out and search for $100,000 to create something. Like we've got something that's tried and tested and um, the dog dog show came to mind. And I, I pitched the idea of creating a work um, that was a, an education resource where everything could be found in the box, including the videos. We didn't have to use the internet to download it. It's all there. I mean, the internet can still be used, but mm. um, it has everything in it that you wouldn't be able to find in random remote locations. But otherwise, the whole play and the whole concepts of the play and the initial um, creation of it was to use recycled materials. So again, finding ways to help clean up the area that you live in. Well, there's a bottle on the beach, let's use that. You know, they were some of the, the really beautiful original concepts here. Um, one of the other difficulties in terms of touring when we toured at uh, the show originally in 2017 with Outback MT, um, of course, every school wanted the show, but not every school could afford the show. And there was a limit to how much the funding we had um, could get us to where it could get us. Um, and even when we got somewhere, like we flew to, we flew to Nulamboy and then had to get a four wheel drive from there and started driving in the four wheel drive to this really remote school, 200 kilometers away by dirt tracks. And it started raining. And what that did was that the, the principal had told us, hey, if it doesn't rain at all, you'll be fine to get here. But if it starts raining, turn around because you're likely to get bogged <laughs> and not reach us and get stuck again. And we had another plane to catch it at another point. So we, we didn't end up being able to go to some of these locations. So what this, what, what this box concept does was address a need that already existed pre-COVID. Um, it addressed a need in cost and efficiency to get places. It addressed a need you know, a lot of us who work in touring performance, um, or all of us consider the, the environment and our impact on the environment. So it addresses that impact as well. Um, and it also addresses the difficulty for teachers uh, in remote schools to have so many different age range, so many different um, uh, language abilities, so many, all of that to come up with an idea, what can we do? And so this concept was to use the work that was already created to create something that um, would use the syllabus and be a wonderful optional way for a teacher to hybridize and pick what they want to either put on portions of the show, put on, use some of the skills and concepts, or put on the full show from scratch, learning the props, all that sort of stuff. So that's the concept for it. I am going to share a little bit of a video of the work that has um, come in since. And this has been, thankfully, was funded by <laughs> Regional Arts Australia, <laughs> partially funded through them and the rest through Outback MT. And uh, I'm gonna share the screen now to watch this little three minute video. Introduction! <laughs> Bump! <laughs> Hi everybody! Welcome to the Dog Dog Bumpin' Box. I'm Chella. I'm Rachel. And today, we are bumping in. Yep. What's a bump in, Rachel? 
A bump in is where we get ready to put on a show. That's right. So we are going to make all the characters from the play Dog Dog. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you how to do it. And then you can bump in your own production of Dog Dog. Yep, we're going to show you how to do make all the characters with stuff you can use around your home or things you might have around school. Yeah, recycling and making puppets. It's great. How cool is that? It's good. Good for the environment. All right, Chilla, let's get started. Okay, let's go get our stuff. Yep, yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> Put it there. We're gonna need some toilet rolls. Yeah. Lots and lots of toilet rolls. Make sure you collect them from your school or from your home. Whatever you like. I've just got a little bit of paint here. Just paint it all over. And make it kind of down that way. It almost looks good enough to eat, I think. <laughs> Yeah, so in Dog Dog, mm -hmm. Bruno eats fish. He does? So how, how does he eat the fish? Goes like this. And all that's left is the skeleton. Oh, that's really clever. <laughs> I like that. made all these fun things, Chilla. Hmm. Do you think we should have a play? Let's do it! Yeah! Oh, maybe I'm going to eat a fish. Oh, no, 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 no. Now you know how to make all the characters for Dog Dog. And you're ready to bump in your own production. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. We know you'll nail it. Chookers, and until the next production, bye. See you later. Bye. little introduction about that. All right, so uh, we're still waiting. It's very hot off the press. We're still waiting for some of the items to be <laughs> delivered to us. So we're going to show you what we have received so far so you can get a concept, an idea of what this, this concept is and how it's going to look. Um, and to find out more information later on when it's fully complete and fully put together, you can go to ArtBackNT's website, which is artbacknt.com.au. Um, so we'll share the other picture and it should be noted that Sarah, uh, who has been working closely with us on this, has not yet seen everything printed. So we're going to also get her reaction because <laughs> this has been a long process for her. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we'll, yeah, I'd love, yeah, I'm so excited. So you can see the screen with bump in box there. You're going to see it there. And we've got a box here. I'm also going to um, share my screen with some of the concepts because we'll get through We'll get through what um, what some of the things that are currently not in the box, but are gonna be in there in just a moment as well. So, um, screen share. Okay. That one. Okay. Oh, so this photo was from the tour that I went on as well in 2017, <laughs> playing all the sound effects. So I've got all the sound effects for the show. Everything's in the box. All right, here we go. So the box itself, the concept for the box uh, is going to look like, I don't know if you can see, you can pin whichever screens you want, but there's an island, there's a title, there's the bump in box, and it's going to be roughly the size of an A4 box, because uh, A3 box, sorry, because we want it to be cost efficient to also send to people with all the resources in it. So here is the bump in box prototype. <laughs> I open it up. And in it, we can see a whole bunch of random little items, party, popper thing, what's that for, a USB stick, I don't know, what's on that, we'll find out in a moment. <laughs> but we've got the script. So in the script, 
I should say as well that the illustrations, everything on the illustrations, they were all done by Chella. So Chella Williams designed the original props, which were all made out of the recycled items. She was in that video you just saw, and she also did all the illustrations for this book. Um, so here we have probably one of the best scripts in the world because it includes pictures. And we've got the characters there, the three main characters, and then there's a bunch of additional characters there and the setting that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And you can also see uh, on the script that we've got up close and personal here, I'll zoom in on that. You can see uh, that we've also got the dialogue there and then the description in a different color for the children and then we've also got where the sound cues would come in as well for whoever happens to be operating for the show a teacher a parent whatever it is um, in that element too so i'm going to stop showing the screen for a moment so we can also go through it so you can see other beautiful elements the dog dog the frog that comes in later on, the mosquito that comes in later on. More story, how fun. Jess, the crocodile. When we get to the end, I'm not gonna spoil the end for you, but then a bit of information about the writer, where the concept came from, the illustrator, all of that on that bit there so that's the script wonderful so we've got a script in the box next item we've got coming out of the box is the work handbook okay classroom handbook now sarah uh, did all the work on this as well so i'm very happy to throw to her to, to describe but you can see on the inside, we've got a little bit of about, about Sarah in there, the contents that's in the page, and then how to use the handbook as well. Oh, Liz, this is just beautiful. <laughs> it all looks beautiful. I haven't seen any of this. So, <laughs> and as a playwright, you know, you write your stories and hope that other people will take them on and collaborate and give them new life. And so, you know, having toured that happened and now with this box as well, it's just given such another layer of depth um, to how the story can be accessed, which is so beautiful and important. Um, so with the work, with the workshop that we've developed for teachers, um, it was, we've got kind of three stages, but it was important to, we felt it was important to develop it in a way where teachers could be responsive to their particular class because we know that in the Northern Territory um, there's a lot of different classrooms and there's bilingual classrooms and mainstream classrooms and they're all going to work in different ways. So what we've done is we've given um, exercises and activities that all classrooms can do but you can work, the teachers can work through them at their own pace and in a way that is responsive to their students and still means that they can work towards whatever outcome or level of outcome is important to them. So it could be a whole school outcome or it could just be the young people making the props and acting out the animals in their own way, or it could be about learning lines and doing it in a really traditional theatrical form. Um, and so this is all being outlined in the workshops and then we've given detailed drama and creative activities so that your child students can learn to enjoy creative learning and um, have this beautiful introduction to theatre and drama. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to share a screen so you can get even closer onto that one too. So I'll share that. Oh, right. <laughs> Down to the next page. So again, it does go through how to use the handbook, 
how the curriculum links in from Northern Territory schools with what the outcomes are, that there's five outcomes. Children have a strong sense of identity. They're well connected, they're connected and contributing. Uh, children have a strong sense of well-being. Children are confident and involved learning and children are effective communicators. And they get to learn all sorts of skills throughout this workbook. And the different colours that you would have seen with the, with the bubbles are for the different um, stages. So um, stage one, uh, which we saw just before, whoop, actually, no, that's on the paper handbook. Stage one is about introducing the story, performing and well-being. Stage two is the practical part where you're creating the world. So you're starting to build all the props and stuff. And then stage three is rehearsing the script. Um, and then obviously it's putting on the play in, in stage four. So there are some other very exciting things that are gonna come out of the box. So I will open up again to that. Uh, so one of the skills that the students may choose to learn how to do is how to also create marketing content. And so in this box, we've got some examples of what a poster might look like um, and what ones they can choose to use, the date, venue, address, times, tickets, they can create their own. We've got some others, they can even draw on their own with another one. So here's the full team, Dog Dog by Sarah Hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else have we got here? Oh, the full island. So this island is important as well because this is also a map for the teachers about where do they set the stage for the audience. So if you just imagine your audience is sitting here, then the ocean is here when they're performing, dog dog sleeps here, up here with the, near this tree is where Jess um, comes through the first time and here in the mangrove section is where they catch the fish and eat the fish. So it's a bit of a map of what the stage also can look like as a suggestion to the teachers. And then another fun activity for the, for the students is create their own poster. So a nice blank one. So everything is going to be printed obviously and put and come out of this box. Um, but it's also going to be there on that USB stick. So here, uh, here <laughs> on the USB are all of the other files that you can that you will be able to find on again. So I will also share your screen for this, uh, for this one. Um, other items that they're going to find in this box include more A4 posters about creating these props. Now, all of these are part of a video series as well that we've got. So if people want to watch a video, they can learn from the video. If they just want to remind themselves with a picture on the wall, they can remind themselves with a picture on the wall. All the characters that they make are here and they will have a poster that comes out of the box. We also have a mood board as well for the different characters, for children to help them to explore the different moods that they might find as part of this. Um, so we've got Dog Dog, the various moods he has, Bruno, the various moods, <laughs> and Jess as well there. We also have a storyboard section too for students to learn how to do their storyboarding as well, what they might do for different scenes, where things might be set up to. And we've got a little picture of <laughs> one of the schools we went to in our tour in 2017 right there as well. So I'm also going to share another little section. So when people look into the USB stick, what they're gonna find on the USB. This one. So here we go. You're gonna have in there, I hope, oh, well, I hope it will open, but it may not. All the sound effects, oh, I've stuffed it up. Moment, my little poor little computer. Okay, uh, can you see that? <laughs> oh no, it's just still blank. Okay, good. So in the script are all the sound cues as well, and they're all numbered in the script according to where that you'll find them in the script in 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 the story and how the teacher can use them. And as most of us who work in live theatre, we all love the Q Lab, but not everybody has heard of the Q Lab. <laughs> So it's up to the teacher about how they might use it. We don't want to do too big a learning curve. <laughs> go and do a course, go to uni, do this whole thing. Anyways, that's that one in there. 
Uh, we have instructional videos on how to make the props. So we've got um, up to about 12 different videos, actually. I don't think I've swapped it out of screen. Can you see that other screen that I'm sharing right now? I'm back on to, I don't think I can. I'm watching, I'm watching Sarah for reactions. Sarah, can you see another big screen? Oh no. <laughs> I can just see the thumbnails, but. Oh no, no, that's not working for me then. I'm just excited looking, <laughs> reading through all the thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> There's 13, 13 videos there. We've got introducing it, what do you do with a bump in, which you saw a little bit of before, how to make the Bruno and Dog Dog costumes, the hats that they wore, how to make the tails as well. And we've got a couple of different options for making different, either a hat for Jess, the character, or a puppet, because we used a puppet in the original, making the toad, making the buffalo horns, making the fish that's used in the ocean dance. The ocean dance if you want to learn how to teach children that as well and it's a very simple little choreography i'm going to go back one step there and then here are all the learning resources again just as you would have found them in the box all the things that are opened up all the different posters and how they look and then of course your own handbook and your own script in case you want to print multiple copies of the script for the children to have as well so I'll stop sharing that one too. And I'm going to go back to my other screen. Oh, I'm about to leave the webinar. That's not the right button. I want to go to this one. Sorry, guys. I've got too many things open now. I'm getting confused by all my screens. Here we go. All right. <laughs> so we're back onto this. So we had a great day filming. Um, again, as I mentioned before, Cella was in the original cast. We didn't manage to get another one of the original dog dogs, unfortunately. Jess, Cella played Jess and every other side character. But again, for, for schools and students, there's so many different characters. There can be schools of fish. There can be a bunch of different snails like those long bums are just like everywhere in the mangroves you've got so many different um different characters and if we're doing an ocean dance they're able to make other things that you might find in an ocean like crabs and and turtles and all those sort of fun things but here we've got the wonderful rachel chisholm filling in for our lost dog dog where did he go <laughs> Uh, and Will and Will Tin Apple filmed and did all the editing for us as well, which was wonderful. And here again is just a, a concept of where you would have the ocean dance that, that students can learn. And then just again, set so we've created it with the prototype. We've done a limited edition of 50 here in the first state and um, case, and then all of those who have contributed to making it possible financially as well. Um, and then who 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 was involved in the first place. So Sarah Hope has created a lot of the content. Chella Williams has as well. Rebecca Renshaw at Artback NT um, really helped to make a lot of the graphic design stuff with Oscar War. Uh, beautiful and seeing and relevant. Um, and the concept and other editing came from me. And then where we've had some things printed and again, Will Tin Apple there as well. So I'm gonna stop sharing that screen. So as much as possible, we've tried really hard to, to link up what was in the original show and the ethics and ethos of what the original show was, which was about um, community building, friendship building, recycling, all various kind of concepts and using what was in the original show because we saw that it, it worked. Um, so I'm going to share one marvellous little video and I'm going to just pull it up in a, in a, in a moment that is just so delightful and i'm gonna hope it doesn't go too loud all right um because the going on with this was a really um beautiful and touching experience there were just three performers on the road in the initial the story itself is a beautiful story um, and the children just absolutely adored it. And one of the favorite moments for them was right near the start. And I'll have, I'll run through the script as well as you'll, you'll see, because it's just the opening scene, but it really gets the kids straight away. Um, and you can see how much they love it when they saw um, an adult 
playing another character and especially a character that wasn't another human. Um, so let me share this one. Where did it go? Oh, hold on a moment. I'm going to share sound as well, but I have to go there. Yeah, and um, okay. Go screen share. Go sure. sound. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> children with the real thing <laughs> and the children we believe will have a lot of fun with this um, with this new iteration and it doesn't the other the other point of it is that it doesn't it doesn't remove the possibility of this show touring again but it becomes an add-on so the show can still perform with all the people with all the characters but then if they want to play it and use it with their own children then they've got this as well so thank you for your time Thank you for having us. <laughs> this has been great. And there are some other the other. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for that. That looks like a delightful project. Um, so I've got a couple of um, questions already. Um, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, cool. Um, so uh, the first question is, I wanted to ask one about, um, given that you're sort of changing a touring model, how um, do you think if you did this again, would it work in terms of, I guess, paying the writer, you know, who's used to getting perhaps royalties from performances of their show or, um, you know, the performers mm -hmm. who might be in the videos, for example, um, where there is this sort of now alternative to actually the actors going out and the performers happening for a paid audience, etc. Are you looking at how you're changing the fee structure for the artists involved? That's an excellent question. And um, the fee structure in this context is working very similar and is if the show went on the road. So we've got royalties for, um, for Chella and for uh, Sarah as the main designers and, and people changing on that. So everybody who had a royalty originally um, from sell-off fees still has a royalty from the selling of the, this box, plus the additional hard work that came from Chella. So, yeah, so it's actually increased a little bit. Mm. Fantastic. Um, I've got a question from Tom, um, who's joining us from Adelaide, um, who just, well, a comment more said he's developed similar resources in music for regional remote applications and um, interested in getting it out to the community. I think um, mm. there's something very nice about the, I guess, the demystifying in a way of the of the process um, mm. and allowing um, everyone to um, jump in and, and make that work. Um, have you has this gone out to schools in a trial mode or a pilot mode yet for testing? That's the next have you, and have you had what sort of feedback have you had from any school that's engaged with the box? No, that'll be the next step. Unfortunately, things have slowed down <laughs> with this process, but we we do have two schools 
but Sarah has consulted significantly. Yeah, so I've consulted as I was writing the workshops um, with teachers in the Northern Territory, um, yeah, at different stages and was able to incorporate their feedback. Um, and then, of course, the original play, we had a great deal of consultation in the actual, for the actual story in terms of curriculum linking and linking into the wellbeing curriculum. Um, etc. So yeah, it hasn't been tested as such as the box, but there's been consultation all the way along. Yeah, so that's why this is a limited edition um, version as well, so that we can iron out the kinks with the next print as well. So. Okay, and um, how long do you think the box would spend in an individual school? Does it mm. do they do, do they just get it and they can have it for the year, or they can have it for the well, it's theirs. It's like yeah. buying a book. It's now their resource. They can use it for multiple years. The beautiful thing about this show as well is that the show itself could tour every three years because the children for the age range, they, they grow and you've got another audience for it too. So I imagine that it would become quite a, a useful thing for, for teachers that are somewhere long term. And, and something interesting really that came from Liz, is that because we know that really remote schools have really limited, I'm not sure if you've said this already, sorry if I'm repeating Liz, really limited internet access, etc. Um, that's why everything's accessible on a USB and they can download it and put it in their system so that it doesn't rely on that technology that is sometimes not great in regional and remote areas. Um, mm. Yeah. And, and we know that posters won't last as well, but <laughs> I hear that there's still something physical there to start off with and then and then when they need to replace it it's still there all on the USB later when it just gets destroyed <laughs> yeah um, Sarah I've got a question for you as the writer so this play uh, was originally written for performance by um, adult actors or uh, yeah. for a youth theatre yeah um, would you have done anything differently with your script if you knew that this was going to be where it ended up or one into, would, would you have written the script um, any differently or possibly yes because i think that when you're writing a play you're always considering audience and who is going to perform it and it has a major impact um I think what's nice is that luckily in this play, there is room to like, I think Liz referenced this earlier, there is room to build in new kind of, on, I guess the ensemble or chorus characters, but potentially if I knew that it was going to be used in classrooms, I maybe would have written more about say a chorus or that kind of um, supportive ensemble um and maybe even written more kind of main characters etc but i think that it's just fortunate that this play does still work in that context and actually having the three main characters and then um room to move does give teachers that creative license i guess to make up the rest of those characters for their students i hope that makes sense <laughs> Yeah. And there's the potential because I was thinking about it as well um, again today, just going, it can, it can even be a whole of school activity. Yes, yeah. You know, so you can get the older students to perform the harder language and get the kids in with the cute little fish outfits and come on yeah. through to school. And yeah, there's there's ways for it to be, it's very adaptable. Mm. Um, and, and you can see, you can see that it's a 40 minute show, but it's such a cute little small. <laughs> Because, because as as Sarah said, most of the most of the direction and story are, are very physical. Yeah. What's actually going on in that? Yeah. Um, the, I guess there's the one element I think I'm going to just poke you a little bit here. I mean, one of the beautiful elements of theatre is lighting. Um, can you see? I mean, I imagine that you've brainstormed around what could you possibly do? Did you come up with any ideas or that in which you could somehow create some sort of lighting effects or? You know, I, I, left, I, I left the lighting blank, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, I thought there was a limited amount of work. 
that a teacher should be, you know, should be, you know, settled with. Um, and often, actually, when we were touring to a lot of those places, we were on very small airplanes, and you, we were hard pressed just getting the set onto the plane. Like you'd have to pay yeah. another three hundred dollars for a, for a seat just to get some set fitting onto the, you know, a tiny little six seat <laughs> airplane. So the one element we removed was the lighting because unfortunately you can get away without the lighting, even though, as you have said, it really does lift the production. Um, yeah. yeah. And just I hope you don't mind me adding to that, Liz. Um, like I can see a heap of stuff to do for lighting, you know. Um, I have imagined this in a traditional theatre setting now. But when it was first written, we knew it was going to tour to very remote communities during the day um, on, you know, the basketball court or whatever you've got. And we had to design, you know, really limited sets and very light props, as I said, to get on the planes, etc. cetera. Um, and that was also about access. So we were touring to communities that don't necessarily access a traditional theatre. Um, and in order to get those little people to see the play um, it needed to be during the day at school and i think there were some performances built in after that first round liz in more traditional venues but mm -hmm. we just have yeah that was just it was almost like that's the brief for now although i think maybe if it ever has another life it'd be lovely to kind of ex you know explore mm -hmm. um the lighting and av for the for the work what could that be yeah cool. I do yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely room i think for you know a middle middle school high school version that has that because they have the capacity for that to do that but this is um designed particularly for primary schools which uh, again yeah, have that. Perhaps you have uh, lamps you can do all those sorts of things but yeah <laughs> I, I i mean I'm, I'm just even thinking you know what could you get away with you know a, a, a digital projector and some mm color blocks or something even if you yeah, had a, yeah, if absolutely. You have a darkened room and even even turning light switches on and off at the wall you've got lightning because there was a thunder moment there's ways to do it yeah yeah um like a couple more questions coming through um aside from the development costs and the production run what does it cost to sort of what do you think it's going to cost to print box and send that um usb and materials to a school that's a very good question. And, and the answer that I've got is I don't know what the final cost is because someone else has been sending it. Um, yeah, I, I would like to find out, but it's going to be, I mean, my, my hope is that it will be making a profit at a $250 rate, you know, that's my hope. And, yeah. and in the initial scoping that was possible. Um, so we just sort of see, but the initial scoping was two years ago. <laughs> And how are you going to listen from sort of Catherine? Sorry, I'm not quite sure where. Uh, from Hobart um, is interested in how you um, going to ensure engagement from those remote schools. Is this um, something they're crying out for? You've said you've done some consultation with them already. Mm. What's this? What's your strategy to get that engagement with the bump in box rather than a touring performance? Sarah, you look like you're ready to answer. Oh, well, I was just going to say that I guess Art Back NT already have those relationships with schools, so that's really fortunate. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I do know from kind of working in, you know, in that kind of more drama position within schools that teachers love, they don't love necessarily extra work, but they love resources that will support them to bring the arts into their classrooms and do really need that um, support to come up with new ideas and different ways of engaging that the students that they're working with. Um, so from the perspective of is it needed, I think that there's definitely, you know, teachers will definitely enjoy this um, mm -hmm. if they're excited about bringing the arts into their classroom um and hopefully we've just made it accessible enough um and then i guess there'd be a marketing perspective as well liz yeah so i did i did do a, a quite a bit of consultation initially in 2020 and um, um school in borolur school in um Utakala, schools here in darwin um and i didn't 
I, I just remembered conversations had with schools in Alice Springs as well from 2017 too. Um, a lot of them, and even somewhere in Lajamanu, they were just like blown away. They were just blown away at, at how things could have been made out of, um, out of, how, of course you can make a puppet out of, a fish puppet out of a bottle. Of course, why haven't we thought about that? You know, ah, oh, here's some ideas that we can do for ourselves. And, and so, um, so because of that, and because of the, the gift that we saw, there were elements of the show that, that were more exciting to the teachers than what the children were responding to. It was just, I just was like, ah, oh, like this could be quite useful. Um, and certainly in the conversations afterwards, they were saying that too. So yeah, so, but it has taken a little bit of time. <laughs> so it's been two years of process. So we have to yeah, get, get, get engaged again. And that's the next meeting for us as well to go, okay, so how can we, how can we talk to them and re-engage and market this and, um, and, and with some of the schools in particular who did support initially, how to get them their gift of the, the box too. Mm. Um. I've got one last question, which is once you've got this up and running through NT, do you have national ambition, international ambition? <laughs> Will you be spending the bumping box around the world or? Look, we, we know that there are so many isolated and remote parts of Australia. Absolutely. So I think it is, is versatile everywhere. Um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be the Northern Territory. The story itself doesn't say anywhere specifically. Um, so anyone, like we're not going to prohibit anyone from getting access to it. So everybody is welcome to, <laughs> to access the product. Um, anywhere that, want, that can speak English will be very happy for it, I think. <laughs> All young people want to know how to find a friend, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then sorry, the, the next one is, do you imagine that... Um, you will reiterate this with a new play and a new playwright and a new team, like on a semi-regular basis or something like that. Like this, yeah. just becomes... that's a great question. That that was my dream <laughs> because there are so many there are so many beautiful children's shows that are being developed here as well. Um, that that the idea is that the cost of making the box um, pays for itself. The royalties, the artists from that particular box get paid as well, their, 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 their figure. Um, and then there is more to then go into producing the next one. So hopefully we actually don't have to go to any funding source and we can start generating our own income. And that's what true sustainability is, isn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. Um, look, look, thank you. That's just been a marvellous conversation. And I'd just like to thank you both as... Um, someone who has sat through his fair share of school generate, primary school generated theatre performances, that the idea of actually having a well-constructed play and story with a bit of production value and innovation and theatricality thrown into it um, would have been something that I would have welcomed <laughs> back when my parents, my, my kids were young. Um, so thank you. thank you very much for the That's work that you're doing. Thank um, you. And that really brings us up to, to time. Uh, thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. Uh, a big thank you to Sarah Liz. And I didn't quite catch the name of the chap who was doing your camera work there, but thank you. <laughs> thank you to our Auslan interpreters, uh, Dana and Georgia. And I'd just like to remind you that our next conversation is on the 4th of May. It's called Small, Slow and Humble, and it's an invitation to consider radical alternatives to the current models of creative success. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a little bit of a different form as an interactive forum, forum, blended community conversation, a reading group and a ritual to create space for reflection, discussion and visioning about how we might nurture small, local and inclusive practice um, in the places where we live, work and love. So that's... Um, Artlands Conversations continues.